Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we'll be installing TrueNAS. Now I actually thought I'd done a video on this but I haven't. Uh, TrueNAS is, it's kind of in the name, it's a NAS solution you can self-host. They also have paid versions and stuff like that but we'll be using, I think it's called their core version, which we can self-host. And I'm going to be installing this on the Zimmer box, which, oh sorry, Zimmer board. I don't know why I keep calling it Zimmer box. Uh, Zimmer board, uh, which I've done other videos on and stuff like that. And TrueNAS will just allow us to set up some storage on the network. And also you can install services like Nextcloud and stuff like that. And it's all managed via the TrueNAS portal as well. So I was going to use Nextcloud as my main storage solution for the Zimmer box. Zimmer board. There I go again. I don't know where that came from. Anyway, um, I'm going to be setting it up. And yeah, we can install Nextcloud on that on top of TrueNAS. So TrueNAS seems like the better um, OS to run. Uh, for the Zimmer board rather than, you, you know, running Casa OS and everything on top. Uh, it's kind of, yeah, a bit redundant for what I want to use it for. So TrueNAS should be the way to go. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to install the ISO, put on a USB that I have here, and then uh, we'll write to it. And then I'll probably record my screen because I won't be able to capture this, um, the screen capture. So I'm just going to have to try to record as much as I can with the phone with the initial install. And then as soon as we can connect to it over the local network, um, then we should be able to yeah have a play around and connect via my uh, Mac, and then I'll be able to capture the screen. So uh, let's switch to my Mac now, and we'll get the install set up, and we'll continue on. So here we are on the TrueNAS website. Uh, this is the download page for TrueNAS Core. As you can see here, it's a pretty widely used thing. You can see 10 million downloads. Open source, free to use. Um, it uses the OpenZFS file system. So it's saying here um, the TrueNAS minimum requirements is 64-bit CPU. The great thing is that uh, we are running a 64-bit CPU, the Zimmer board is. 8 gig RAM, uh, we can, we've easily got that sorted. 16 uh, GB boot drive, uh, we've got the internal 32 but we've also got the 1 terabyte uh, SSD attached so that's all good. And at least one attached disk so we have that. So we have the internal and then we have the attached disk. The network port we have and hardware RAID not required. Good, because we don't have that. So, before we continue, join. No, I don't want your newsletter. So I'll just go, no, thank you. There's two versions, uh, TrueNAS Core and the... What's that? Stable and Legacy. Okay, we want Stable. Uh, so we'll download that. While this downloads, I was just thinking, TrueNAS, is, it seems like the, the best platform to run on the Zimmer board for the long term. Again, because... You can have the NAS and everything set up, but you can install Nextcloud and everything like that on top of TrueNAS. So again, rather than having the whole CASA OS and the Debian backend and stuff like that, it, and and kind of hitting and missing between Docker containers and that, we can have TrueNAS rather than CASA OS essentially. And I think TrueNAS will work better for what I want to achieve. Um, so yeah, again, that's kind of what I'm hoping here, um, that it works well for what I'm wanting. Um, and while I do that, hopefully you can understand what the install for TrueNAS looks like. Radio, there it is, and now I'll select the my little flash drive that I've just added. So there it is, the Kingston Data Traveler. Select, and flash. And we'll just let that do its thing. Oh, better enter in my password. And there we go. So, we'll just let this write, and then once that's done, we'll be able to plug the USB into the Zimmer board, and then I'll plug the Zimmer board into one of my monitors, and then I'll try to capture the monitor, hopefully it comes through okay, and then we'll go through with the setup. Right, so the flash is complete, so we should be able to pull it out, plug it into the Zimmer box, and go from there. So um, I'm gonna try change the setup now of the camera, and we'll see what we can do. Right, uh, I'll grab the USB, pull that out. Sorry for the loud key noises. And we'll plug this in. There we go. Oh, right. So let's just try just this a little bit. There we go. So, uh, boot pretty much. Uh, you know, there we go. Boot override. So we want the data traveler. I think that one. There we go. True NAS. Nice. Okay, sorry. You still can't really see. Let's try to bring this back a bit. Right, so I'm hoping you're going to be able to follow this through, but essentially we've so we've booted in now. Um, we're going to install and upgrade. So I hit OK. And it's got here, select one or more drives where TrueNAS should be installed. 
So I'm going to think it should be installed on the MC, like just the internal. So I'm going to install it there. So click one or more drives where Trina should be installed. Well, I just want it installed on the internal and then I want to add the external which is storage. So let's just try this. This will erase all partitions on, yep, that's fine. You can't use for sharing data. Ah, there we go. Okay, great. So that's what I was thinking. I just want to use the internal for the install um, and then we'll use the um, SSD for the actual storage. So installing on SATA, SAS or NVMe, Flash Media is recommended. Yep. Proceed. Yes. Password. Right. Let me set a password. So TrueNAS can be booted on in either BIOS or UEFI mode. Uh, BIOS is recommended for legacy and enterprise hardware, whereas UEFI may be required for newer consumer motherboards. Let's just go UEFI then. And we'll let it do its thing. So it's just installing the base OS at the moment, which is great. We'll just let it do its thing. Also, just on another note, that Zimmer board and like the whole BIOS and everything was pretty cool, right? Like it's such a versatile board. Um, you know, I can even install Windows and stuff on this. There's no real limitation like I was facing with the Raspberry Pis. And it's and it's still a single board computer. It just blows my mind. It's um it's just been a positive experience so far using the Zimmer board, which is great. Also, I do again, I apologize for the weird camera angles. I, I don't really have a screen capture device or anything. It's all just OBS that I have to use. Um, I never really do much actual screen capture like this much anyways to make it worthwhile trying to grab anything. Um, so, yeah, just recording the screen I think will be fine for now. <laughs> you just have to bear with me changing angle every minute or so. Is that really 10%? How long does this base install take? Jeepers. Right, so the base OS just installed, and now I guess it's installing any dependencies and just the initial setup of TrueNAS itself. So there we go, uh, the TrueNAS installation has succeeded. Please reboot and remove the installation media. Right, yeah, let's do that. There we go, so now it's booting. So I'm hoping I won't have to sit here and hold this camera, um, and I should be able to hit its IP address and finish the setup from there. Right, so this is what I was waiting for. We can see now that we've got a web user interface. So let me just try to connect to that. Right, so we are now in TrueNAS. So what we can do is we'll just have a quick look around so we can see we have like a general dashboard where we can see all the network interfaces. We have two um, and we've just got the storage available. Now that's just because that's the internal storage. What we're going to add is actually the main storage. So if we come down here and then to pools, we can create a new storage pool, go add, create a pool, and we'll just add our one. Now it's probably gonna complain here because we're doing a single disk, but what we're gonna do is be setting up a stripe. Yeah, here we go. And that essentially means that if we had two disks, a terabyte each two, that means we could stripe them and it'll be two terabyte. But if one disk failed, the other disk, all your data's gone, right? So um, in this case, we only have one drive. So if our one drive fails, that's it. So I don't have any redundancy, and that's pretty much what it's telling me here. Um, so we can just click force, and it's saying that it's discouraged, but yes, I only have one disk. So, you know, if it fails, it fails. We'll give it a name. Uh, so we'll just go SSD underscore 01. So that's just a naming pattern I'm gonna go with. So it's all to say 01, and we will be adding that in. So I'll hit create. Contents of all added disk will be removed. Yep, correct pull. And now it's just setting that up. So if I were to get another drive and have that as redundancy, then I would have still only have one terabyte, but I'd have full redundancy if one drive failed. And here we go. We can see that we have um, close to 900 gig um, of storage. So now we've got that drive. We can actually set up shares and stuff like that as well. Uh, so we have a name. So we'll call this uh, SMB. McNugget, because McNugget is the name of my Zimmer board, is what I call it. Um, and it's going to be a, I guess it would be multi-user time machine. Eh, I could use it for quite a th few things. Default share parameters are probably fine. And what have we got here? Where do we want it stored on SSD01? We could probably do a forward slash here on here and call this um, the SMB. McNugget, just so we have something there, and hit submit. 
So this should now create a share that I'll be able to connect to. Enable the service to start automatically. Enable service. The SMB service has been enabled. Right. Configure permissions. Configure now. Um, select a preset. What is this? Uh, home. What's the home preset, I wonder? Let's hit continue. So who? Owner at allow um, group. Who? Everyone. Allow. Okay, so everyone has allow save. Let's just see what this looks like. I'm just rushing through here, not being too pedantic because I'll set this up. This is more of just an overview and install of true now. So if we actually have this now, I should be able to find this on the network. So let's open that up and have a look. Right, so here we are. We can see we have now true NAS. So if we double click on this, oh, we've got connection failed. Here we go. So I, I was missing this. So if I click allow guest access and hit save, that should allow us to connect to it now. I don't have that enabled. So let's jump back. Guest connect. There we go. Right, so now we can see the SMB share and it's all nice and empty. So I don't have permission to actually create anything in here, but um that's essentially all set up now which is great so if i actually gave myself more permission i'd be able to create stuff in there but the whole permission thing is probably going to take a little while to set up but hopefully that kind of shows you setting up the true nas and installing it and then adding a drive to your pool and as you can see just having one drive there's no redundancy uh, for me i'm not too bothered by it just yet but i'll probably go out and grab another drive so i can upgrade uh, some redundancy on my now nas uh, running on zimmerboard so uh, i hope that was helpful i'm more than happy to make more content on this it's just that there's so much to cover because this is a proper like system here You've got to go through permissions setting up accounts groups all of that stuff We've only just scratched the surface, so I'm probably going to cover more on this. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. But this has just been the setup. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.